instinct. Did you know? The Super Nintendo port of the original Killer Instinct was essentially a backup plan after an attempt to port KI to Nintendo's Ultra 64 hardware fell through. A promotional spot on the intro reel of the arcade cabinet stated, Available for your home in 1995, only on Nintendo Ultra 64. But Nintendo made it impossible for Rare to fulfill that claim after pushing back the release date of the 64-bit console all the way to September 1996. In an interview with Retro Gamer, Chris Tiltston talked about this tumultuous time for Killer Instinct. Originally, we went straight onto the N64 version, but halfway through when the N64 was delayed, it seemed like a good opportunity to get another version out the door, which is how Killer Instinct 2 came about. The Super Nintendo port, however, was a bit of a downgrade. Because of the hardware restrictions of the 16-bit console, 80% of character animation was gutted down to keyframes only for special moves and attacks. Not surprisingly, the Game Boy port of Killer Instinct also took a big hit from the downporting process. Aside from the obvious difference between a giant giant hard drive based CG arcade fighting game being shrunk down to fit on a black and white handheld machine from 1989, the Game Boy roster also cut out Cinder and Riptor, similar to how Killer Instinct 2 cut Cinder, Riptor, and Thunder from its lineup. The decision to remove these characters in Killer Instinct 2 has never been officially stated, but character usage data culled from the original arcade game might have been a contributing factor. Spinal was almost dropped from KI2 as well due to a lot of players feeling he was hard to use in the first game, but Rareware instead decided to take this on as a challenge, so they took the undead warrior back to the drawing board and drastically changed the way he played for the sequel. The replacement characters of Tusk, Maya, and Kim Wu were chosen to add more variety to the roster, which is something the time-hopping storyline in KI2 afforded Rare. Kim Wu and Maya were created to up the female presence which was exclusively being carried by Orchid in the first game. Killer Instinct 2's characters also had surprisingly elaborate backstories which were interconnected with each other. This enabled the player to uncover different endings depending on who they killed or didn't kill during their playtime. If the player selected Orchid and killed Jago, she'll be temporarily victorious but also saddened by the revelation that Jago was actually her brother whom she had never met. Some endings were even more obscure, like how a player needed to destroy a crumbling stone well in Saberwolf stage while playing as Glacius to find the location that hid his kidnapped alien buddies. Interestingly enough, Killer Instinct 2 was also planned to be released on the Super Nintendo. According to Kevin Bayless, the port was around 80% complete and looking good, with even more animation and effects that the first Super Nintendo port lacked. Unfortunately, this project was cancelled once finalized Nintendo 64 development kits became available, as Nintendo didn't want a high-profile Super Nintendo game competing with their newly released 64-bit console. KI2 would eventually be released on the N64 as KI Gold, and even though it was a much more faithful core than was possible in old hardware, it still suffered from cut content. The multiple endings and FMV sequences were just completely removed, and the animation and background details were reduced. In fact, the sprite-based backgrounds of the arcade game were so intensive on the N64 CPU that they were just completely redesigned in 3D, which the machine could display far more easily. Despite waning popularity of the fighting genre and arcades in general at the time, Rare wanted to continue the franchise and thus began work on a third arcade game. A small team led by Chris Tilston had a 3D demo with two Jagos on screen, and motion capture work had already begun. The project was ultimately cancelled as Rare's internal management started to have doubts about the franchise. Tilston recalled, I think management looked at the sales of Donkey Kong Country and Killer Instinct and just didn't want to go after a market that was a third the size of the platformer title market. According to Tilston, it was it was then that Rare put their resources into the 3D platformer 12 Tales Conquer 64, which later turned into Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Speaking of which, one of Conquer's idle animations has him playing a Game Boy, and sharp-eared gamers can hear by the sound effects that Conquer is playing a few rounds of KI. Despite the indefinite hiatus throughout the years, Rare constantly teased the third Killer Instinct game with a series of small cameos and hints regarding the elusive sequel. A Killer Instinct game can be seen on a shelf in Grab by the Ghoulies for the original Xbox. Viva Pinata Trouble in Paradise had a card reading feature that Rare's site provided cards for, and these included Orchid, Fulgore, and Tusk. Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts also featured many nods to the possibility of Killer Instinct 3, starting with the NPC Bottles, who could be asked the question, what do you know about KI3? Fulgore's Fist is a modification available in the game's vehicle creation mode. And finally, if the player stands near the Jolly Dodger NPC long enough, he will look around nervously and eventually take out a briefcase filled with Xbox 360 copies of Killer Instinct 3. 
At E3 2013, Microsoft announced Killer Instinct would make a return on the Xbox One, with development lead by Double Helix Games. While some fans lamented the fact that Rare was not directly involved with the project, others have pointed out that even if they had, all the staff who worked on the original games had long since left the company anyway. One of the founding forces behind Killer Instinct, Ken Lobb, is still credited with the role of producer, as he joined Microsoft in 2001. Lobb is also the voice of Thunder in the latest installment. Killer Instinct for the Xbox One has a series of interesting secrets. Secrets, the most prominent revolving around the music of the game. If the players remain idle during a fight for a certain amount of time, the background music becomes less and less intense until it completely changes to mimic some classic Killer Instinct themes. Another audio treasure is the fact that navigating around the game's menus will actually play the defining notes of the original Killer Instinct theme each time the cursor is moved. All of this is due to the game's composer, Mick Gordon, being a big fan of the original games and sought to pay as much homage to the original audio design as possible. Gordon also revealed on Twitter that Spinal's new theme was a global effort that combined the talents of over 20 people across 5 countries over the course of 3 months. It was conceived to be sung in Swedish, with warriors who are attempting to summon Spital to aid them in the forthcoming battle. The song includes the sound of a Tibetan kangling, otherwise known as a human leg bone flute. There are some hidden details in Fulgore's various costume options. His main outfit features an Ultratech logo on his chest that can be seen during his Devastation Beam animation. On Color 4, the logo changes to a Double Helix logo. Color 5 has an Xbox 360 logo. Classic Fulgore's Color 4 has a Rareware logo on the underside of his chest plate, and Classic Color 5 has the logo of the original Xbox. That's all for today, but don't forget to subscribe to Did You Know Gaming and follow Did You Know Gaming on Facebook and Twitter. Make sure you also check out DidYouKnowGaming.com, and if you like this video, well then check out our other videos. I'm Matt from Super Best Friends Play, and if you want to see slash hear me and my knucklehead companions suck hard at fighting games and lots of other stuff, then head on over to SuperBestFriendsPlay.com and give us a gander on YouTube as well. Also, we don't really suck at fighting games, I was just being self-deprecating. That's, that's something that we do. Oh, God, we do suck. We do... Oh, God, no. <laughs>